So this is gonna be incredibly easy. I just need to know the secrets to the universe and the answers to everything. No problem. What happens if everything goes wrong? I was speaking to someone who I think we both know, Elon Musk, and he was talking to me about the importance of not finding the right answer, but asking the right questions. What is the right question? One of the big questions is whether technology is gonna end up being our friend or end up being our enemy. There are people, including Elon, who talk about a singularity in which suddenly the machines, the robots, the artificial intelligence, surpass us, realize that they don't need us anymore, and that they will create their own universe, and in some ways humans will be made redundant. It would be really weird in an existential way to think of an Earth without humans or human intelligence, but that's what happens to species. They eventually become extinct. Maybe they have a good run of 200,000, 300,000 years, but then they go. You know, technology has the possibility of helping us to figure out how to keep this planet safe, how to deal with carbon and whatever the next problem might be. It also has the potential to create new weapons of war, to change the way we fight wars. It will be only as good or as bad as we make it. How can we get to the future that we all dream about having? I think we're getting too uptight as a society on issues that we don't fully understand, and it's as if we're fearing technology more than embracing it. In fact, despite what some people are worried about, I'm worried it's going too slowly. I don't know why my phone doesn't do voice recognition perfectly, totally understand what I want, and is able to, when I say what's happening with the Saints, know I'm talking about a New Orleans football team and not canonized do-gooders from centuries past. Ada Lovelace in the 1830s wrote about how it was important to have human creativity and machine processing power seamlessly joined together. We're still marching down that process and it's been about you know 200 years since we've had great industrial revolution machines and they're getting more and more intelligent and I just hope we can speed that up and learn to work with our machines better. Do you think that we need to become an interplanetary civilization in order to survive? I think it would be cool. I think it would be cool to go to Mars. I think it would be cool to settle other planets. Not just because we may need to escape the Earth, which I'm not sure is the biggest problem, but we would learn how to live in different environments. We would learn how to adopt. And that is something that is so distinctly human. We're learning machines. We get to adapt. We get to figure out how to do things. and. It only happens when we push ourselves. When a John Kennedy, you know, exactly 50 years ago says, all right, we're gonna send a man to the moon and return it. That helped push things. We don't do that much anymore. We have a government that's somewhat paralyzed. Why? You know, Google, it was a group of graduate students who were being funded by the National Science Foundation to understand information technology. The internet, it was funded by the Pentagon. The first computers, the first transistors, the first microchips were all done because our government dreamed big. Nowadays, we can't even get an airport fixed. We have air traffic control systems that are far less advanced than my iPhone. So we have a government in this country in which we can't dream big and say, let's figure out the next scientific advances, the next basic research we're going to do. So that's the big danger I see with the United States government. Around the world, the problem is totally failed governments. I do worry about that, and I hope that in the next election cycle, people of good faith just take back power and say, let's not have a government that's totally dysfunctional. What did you learn about the future from Steve Jobs? 
Steve Jobs believed very strongly that the future belongs to those who can connect art with science, those who stand at the intersection of beauty and technology. And that's where humans and machines can work together well, because I think humans are and will always be more creative, have a greater sense of beauty than our machines will, have a greater sense of the humanities and the arts. It's why the humanities and the arts are so important. It gives us empathy for other people. It gives us creativity. And what Steve Jobs understood so well was that the true value comes when you're a humanities person and you connect with engineering, when you're an arts person and you connect with science. Technology should be there to give every person an equal opportunity instead of increasing this divide between the wealthy and the poor. At the moment, we're seeing that divide increase. Technology could say every person has equal opportunities, equal chances, can have a decent living. And I think we have to use technology to make sure all of us participate in a revolution that creates a stronger economy instead of leaving people behind the way we're doing now. Why do we still have conflict? And do you think that we are going to need the help of AI to ultimately find peace? You know, we're flawed, all of us, as humans. We have aggression in us. We have jealousies in us and rivalries. We have tribal instincts, whether it's Sunni and Shia, whether it was the Protestants and Catholics in Northern Ireland, whether it's tribes that feel they have to use aggression in order to assert themselves. How do we get over that hump? It's not easy. We haven't figured it out. There is hope that technology, by bringing us together, by allowing us to share ideas, can give us more empathy, just like art gives us more empathy. If you have empathy for the other, the other tribe, the other person, you're far less likely to ever get into a conflict. At its best, technology and art can both promote that.